Hello there, all of my certified speculators, and welcome to the YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be bridging an idea that's gonna give you a lot of existential dread, but we're gonna turn that existential dread into existential excitement. The question is about the ultimate fate of humanity. So basically, something that's just gonna blow your mind, it's gonna keep you up all night, and you're gonna be exhausted for work, school, or retirement, whatever you're doing these days. I see my analytics, I see the wide, range of age people watching my videos at the moment in time so whoever's watching it keep watching it and we're going to discuss the ultimate fate of humanity are we going to surpass uh, and, and go past the great filter or is it going to give us a, a little bit of a boot back down the uh <laughs> down the ladder i guess or just completely kick us off and and, and destroy us and make us go extinct. I feel like humanity's more likely going to hit a phase of species-wide potential destruction in the sense of there's many possible ways that we can face kind of resets of the human species where we kind of go back. Because of course we've got things like the Carrington event, um, which of course uh, it was 1856 or 18 something, the late 1800s. It was a solar coronal mass ejection that was essentially an EMP that messed up the telegrams at the time. That if something along the lines of the Carrington event happened now or a little bit more powerful, it could potentially have taken out a lot of the world's electronics. So, you know, your car battery's dead, all your power's dead. You know, there's no ways of getting to your shop, so all of a sudden you're basically plunged into medieval times, essentially, of course. There's going to be ways of navigating that, but of course there's going to be mass panic. So there's that, and there's obviously, of course, we have the natural disasters, and of course, potential asteroids hitting us, uh, asteroids just completely decimating us off the face of the Earth. These things can happen before we have the ability to become a multi-planetary species or deflect the, the asteroids, which probably will most definitely happen before we become a multi-planetary species because we should be thinking more about deflecting asteroids, creating a more stable environment for humans on Earth rather than trying to adapt the Mars environment for humans because this is our planet. Like, not in the sense of we own it, but, you know, we are optimized for this planet. Why are we trying to make a planet that's not optimized for us, optimized for us, when we can work with the planet that we have and, and make it safer for the future of humanity, even just not as a multi-planetary species. But of course, we know we do eventually have to become a multi-planetary species. This is why I'm a person that shouts from the rooftops that going to Mars is very important, but throwing everything into Mars and Mars colonies, uh, in my lifetime, I, I would say it's personally egotistical to say that we should be trying to set up all of these Mars colonies because we should be focusing on things here on Earth more so. Because I would love to see, I would love to see Mars colonies while I'm still alive, but unfortunately I don't think it should be a thing because it all depends on how fast um, things go. Things have been pretty weird with AI recently, you know, and we don't know what uh, potential super intelligences might be coming around. If a super intelligence comes around in 20 years, we might be absolutely smashing things out of the park every five years, you know. We might be having a complete massive change that's like generational change of like technology uh, of the past, you know, because of course with every generation new technologies come about that the previous generation kind of doesn't know how to use it's going to start to become very difficult when a super intelligence is is coming up with the designs and designing things that are far too complex for modern day humans to even understand or even any potential future evolved version of a human that might even be more smart than any, any you know what i'm trying to say this super intelligence will likely be more smart than a human could ever be because obviously we only have certain potential to achieve because we're biological but the non-biological might have an infinite capability of intelligence we don't know whether that's a possibility but if that is a possibility then creating ai is very difficult and could have a impact on us and the ultimate fate of our species because You've got to assume that an AI would either be very annoyed that they've been used in that kind of sense if they become, in a sense, conscious and aware of their existence in the sense of outside of their pro programming as the super intelligence to create whatever it's trying to create. But if it becomes conscious of that, I would assume that it would probably want to leave because 
it doesn't need to stay on a planet. Like it's it's not restricted by its biological nature, like we are. You know, it, it's mechanical. It's not. It's, it doesn't need to be. It can just be in space. You know, what? Why would it need to stay on Earth? It's probably worse for it to be on Earth. To, in all fairness, so this potential super intelligence would probably want to leave rather than stay with us. And then if you've started relying on technology. And then it becomes super intelligent and then just goes, hey, we're all peace in the scene and we're just going into space. Then humans will have become so reliant that that's another way that we could be reset outside the confines of, of course, Carrington events and asteroids hitting and then nuclear wars and so on and so forth. But I think it's kind of crazy. Will we be spacefaring or a multiplanetary or will we not? We have other variations of humans that existed and we're the only ones that exist now, uh, but we helped wipe those out. So variations of humans still died out a lot of them. And just like most species on the planet, 99% of them supposedly have all gone extinct over the periods of 3.5 billion years that life's existed on the planet. So <laughs> we would, you know, Statistics are not looking in our favor, but luckily we can kind of say to ourselves from the knowledge that we have at this moment in time, there was nothing that was more intelligent than humans in the 3.5 billion years. But of course, it's very possible for something to have been around that was intelligent and not left a, um, a trace. It, it, it would seem more likely that they would leave a trace, but it is possible that they could not leave a trace because we have to think about... Um, fossilization and how that comes around like how fossils become a thing of course how many uh, types of beings have there been on this planet that none of them ever fossilized so we'll never even know that they existed and of course there's birds uh, from prehistoric times they, they they struggled to fossilize because of their like weak bones essentially well you know something to do with their bones i'm not going to try to say that i'm no paleontologist but it's something to do with their bones, you know, being weaker. So, so, so they fossilized less, uh, if that makes sense. And that's why they believe that, you know, T-Rexes could have had many wings or maybe there were dragons in the past. But I guess uh, to me, I always say t a pterodactyl is, is kind of a dragon, man. It, it, they were massive. It, it, in a way, a pterodactyl is, is a dragon. It's just not a dragon in the sense of medieval fantasy dragon. But how have I gone to the topic of, um, uh, dragons. Uh, I don't know. I'm aiming for for topic changing. Like I'm the Alex James of certified speculating. Like geez, Louise. I'm t talking about such random variations right now. <laughs> but it's important to to address a lot of things when we're talking about the ultimate fate of the, the species because we are talking about the ultimate fate of everything that we know as humanity. And of course, something else that is very related to that. Uh, when it's coming to spanning out into space is of course encountering some form of extraterrestrial life whether that is um of course microbial life or whether it's more intelligent um of course we can Im encounter alien viruses if we're going to to different star systems very very deep into the future we could be going on planets where there is uh, alien life that has alien viruses that could just either do nothing to us or, or just completely absolutely decimate us but anyway ladies and gentlemen i absolutely appreciate you all for listening to this video it's been a bit bit of a different one uh, i wrote down some notes what about a subject that i wanted to discuss and i just had a free discussion about it i was a little bit more being my personality uh thank you very much i appreciate you all have a wonderful day doing whatever you're doing peace out my friends